Hey everyone, this is Curve Knight, bringing you a little bit of a different video today. Uh, instead of a deck profile, this is going to be a little bit of a theory crafting video, uh, kind of just showing you what I have been working with, uh, with Great Nature post history collection. So I figured since Great Nature, for some reason, got hit on the ban list, there must be a, a some reason why Bushiroad is too scared of the deck and they feel like they have to preemptively hit some of the cards. Um, and I've been going over some of the possible things that are the things that are possible once we get into the history collection. So I figured today I'm just going to be sharing uh, what I've been working on. All right, so starting off with the grade threes, I am currently, I have this at a 2-2 split between the old Big Belly and the new Big Belly. Uh, with this current build that I'm playing right now, uh, the Big Belly is actually not as good as you would think it is because the build kind of centers around uh, wiping your entire board with one of the cards that we're going to be uh, talking about later. Um, and a lot of the time you don't really have anything on board. The only real difference is that extra 10k that the V Big Belly has over the original. But sometimes that stride skill is actually not as terrible as you think it would be. It's technically on hit pressure. Um, because most of the time you're going to be hitting that 20k threshold. Uh, I guess we can go over the old Big Belly stride skill. Um, it has a skill that you're never going to use. But the stride skill is when you stride over UCB1, choose two of your rear guards. They get power plus 4,000 in typical Great Nature fashion. However, they don't actually retire during the end phase, which is kind of annoying actually uh, for Great Nature because a lot of your best abilities are kind of linked to retiring at during the end phase. Um, point case in point, the uh, new Big Belly. Um, but it also gives those rear guards a skill that if a attack from a unit in the same column as uh, this unit hits the Vanguard, if the power is 20k or greater, you can actually draw a card. Um, so that is actually not a once per turn skill. So if you give this to something um, and it swings at the Vanguard and then that thing restands or you call something else in its column, you do actually get to get that on hit draw. So for like, for example, if you were to have a booster here or even like literally anything here, like whether it be a boost or even like a grade three, you give it that skill, you give it plus 4K, and then if anything in this column hits, you do actually get to draw a card as long as its power is 20K or greater. So you can literally, if it's a booster, you boost, swing, call something else here, swing, if that thing hits, you do actually get to draw, which is kind of insane to think about. Um, cons but honestly, Great Nature is known for its draw power. So it's not that surprising, but uh, I think the 2-2 two -two split is pretty decent because just getting that extra Axel is really what's most important. But I have considered just playing the full 4 um, OG Big Belly because I think that being able to hit that first stride while your opponent is on grade 2 is just that important for the deck. Okay, so the Big Bellies are actually going to be the only grade 3s that we are going to be playing. We're not going to be playing any of the talented Rhinos. At least I'm not right now, just because it's not a combo piece and it is kind of clunky. And honestly, some of the other attacks that you're doing are just a little bit better, uh, at least in my opinion, for this build, I would say. Uh, but getting into the grade 2s, I am playing the 4 Blushing Parakeet, which is uh, on place... CB1, check top 7 for a grade 3. Um, and then if it is on rear guard, it gets retired and also gets plus 3k. But anyways, um, the reason we're playing this card is because we want a way to search out our grade 3, um, the big bellies. Uh, basically, it, this if we're going first, this if we're going second. We want to be able to search them out. And I found that the easiest way to do that with the fewest number of cards in deck is the Blushing Parakeet. Um, I know we do have Mika Saburo, which is an amazing card but it doesn't do anything on its own. You do need to play other combo pieces in order to make it work. So I opted to just go the Blushing Parakeet route and just have as few cards uh, as few cards that I can. Uh, so I have more space for other cards and more cards that are contributing to the strategy. And to that strategy, which I don't know if you've guessed it by now, but it is actually a focus on those plant tokens uh, with the four copies of the Prod Pollen, which is just a on-place CB1 um, called two plant tokens, which is very good. It is a 9k, but you know, you're an Axel deck. You should be used to that by now. Um, but it is very good in that sense. Um, and we're going to talk about why making plant tokens is the play. Uh, you probably already know if you, if 
you know anything about the G zone. Um, and to that end, we are actually playing four copies of Ran Ran. Um, basically, this card is just another on place call of plant token um, because we just want to be making as many tokens as possible. And unfortunately, we are not Neo Nectar, uh, meaning that we don't have a huge variety of plant token cards yet. Uh, so we kind of do have to just rely on what we've gotten in D in order to make the tokens work. All right, so that's going to be it for the gray twos. We're just playing the 12 that you see before you. All right, so getting into the grade ones, uh, we are starting off with another D card that is contributing to those plant tokens, the burrow mushrooms. You slide him into soul and call two plant tokens. Um, so which is really good for two reasons. The first is that we have a lot of soul issues. Um, basically we want to be going into our battle phase with maybe six or seven soul. Um, so he definitely contributes to that. And he does also call out those plant tokens, which you do need for the deck. So overall, very good card. Um, he is also a 6k body, meaning that you do have some damage deny plays. Um, if your opponent, um, is playing something that where you can't afford to give them any CB. Um, but for our other cards, we are playing, uh, the two, two ratio of V to G mini belly. Uh, if you remember from my spring fest top uh i was playing this ratio in the deck mostly because i was scared of not actually hitting the big belly because in that build if you don't hit the big belly you are just dying automatically um of course the v big belly is our grade three searcher from top five uh 13k if it if there's something on an axel circle um i'm playing the 2-2 split uh kind of to the same vein as the blusher parakeet where i want more things to uh, add to my consistency of getting that grade three, as well as um, using the fewest amount of cards possible, because like I said, Mika Sabro needs other cards in order to combo with it. Um, and we are playing the extra two copies of the mini belly. Uh, one, because it is stride fodder, and that actually comes up a lot more than you think. And two, um, if we draw into the incorrect big belly, um, which is you want to get this one if you're going first, you want to get this one if you're going second, uh, we can always just call this, uh, reveal the wrong one, and then search out the right one, and then we are good to go. Um, and then for the last couple of grade ones, we are playing two Rolox because I think that getting to your kill turn, which your kill turn is actually kind of powerful now, um, is pretty important. So just being able to get that stride, whether you're going first or going second, um, Roloch is just there to help to that end. Um, and my last grade one is actually a little bit of a flex slot. Uh, currently I'm just playing the grade one that's on place called Plant Token, but only if your Vanguard is at grade three. Um, so honestly, this could be another Roloch. It might end up being another Roloch. It could be something else, but for now it is just this because I want some more plant token extenders. But to be fair, I think I'm probably going to take this out because um, with the uh, eight in the grade two slot that you're playing, you pretty much see it every single time. Um, and of course, our PGs are playing the Elementaria because you kind of have to. This is premium. And at the moment, I am playing the Deli Bellies for my PG just because it's just a really amazing PG. Um, probably one of the best. Uh, it's just that on when it's retired from Guardian or Rearguard Circle, you Soul Blast 1, Counter Charge 1, Draw 1. Basically a free PG. Um, the one issue I have with this card is that it does cost Soul. And in this deck, you do need a lot of Soul. But I think just being able to have that little bit of versatility, you know, if it's there and you need it, you use it. Um, but if not, you just use it as a regular PG. Uh, it's pretty good. You don't actually really need the Counter Charge because this deck is not very Counter Blast heavy. Um, but it is still an overall good card. Uh, so currently it's this, it could be honestly like DPGs, but Deli Belly is just too good of a card to pass up at the moment. Okay, so this next part is going to ma might make you think that I'm a little bit crazy, but I am playing actually some grade zeros in the deck. Um, this is Spex Chanchilla, a card you've probably never heard of before. Um, and I think that it actually almost has a space in this deck, but it, it, it's it's something I'm playing around with. Um, so this is a forerunner, but obviously we're not using it as our main starter because we are playing the beginning Hyrax as our actual starter. Um, but this guy's skill is that you can put him into the soul and choose a normal unit from hand and discard it. You look at the top card of your deck and then you actually get to put it on the top or the bottom, draw a card, and then if you have a face up card in your G zone, um, you actually get an extra 5k to one of your units. Um, so it is a little bit of a scry where you can check the top card. If you like it, you can take it to hand. If you don't, you can put it on the bottom and then draw a card. 
Um, but the main, and then you do get a little extra bonus if you do have the face up G zone, which if you superior stride is going to happen. Uh, but the main reason we're doing this is because it is a main phase in soul card. Um, so you're basically, it's a minus one to cycle. Um, but basically the reason you're doing it is to get more cards in the soul. And theoretically, if your opponent is trying to be funny, um, like one of my friends tries to be, and they want to stay on grade zero, you can technically ride this, draw your card, and then swing under for 4k. Uh, and then when you ride into grade one, you can ride over this. And since it is actually a forerunner, it will call itself out um, because it doesn't need to be the only card in soul. It's just as long as you ride over it, uh, which is kind of funny to think about. But for the most part, this is just another card that we can just put into soul because we need, as I said, like six or seven soul um, by the time we enter the battle phase. All right, so getting into our trigger lineup, uh, the entire trigger lineup is devoted to getting cards into soul. As I was saying, we are playing three copies of the Curious Pony, which is our GB1, put it into soul, give 10K, draw a card. And we are playing the four copies of Pawn Belly, which is the, uh, I guess the Strider Crit, where um, it does the same thing as Curious Pony, except you have to be on Big Belly and it gives only 5k. Um, but this is getting an errata where it is a 10k trigger, 15k shield. And then if you damage check it, it, it is a draw. Um, so I think that this is just a little bit better. Um, it sucks that you get 5k instead of 10k, but honestly having an extra versatile effect is just that much better. And even to that end, because we are so desperate for cards in the soul, we are actually playing four copies of the Approval Frigate, um, which is a, I, a lot of clans actually have these. Um, Great Nurture has like two or three of these as a stand to draw and a crit, um, where it's just you put into soul, you choose one of your units and it gets plus 3k um, until end of turn. Uh, so it is a 5k crit, it's not eroded, and it is a 10k shield. But the reason we're playing this is because we want as many cards to soul charge as possible. And Great Nature and Stoikea in general do not have any good generic soul charge. Um, so we're basically just playing this because we want as much soul as possible. Okay, so just finishing off with the last couple trigger cards, we're obviously playing the four heal guardians, uh, also revealable off of your mini belly, and you can search out your uh, correct big belly with that. Uh, very good. Unfortunately, I don't think that G Guardians for Great Nature are the way anymore. I think we have a lot more offensive pressure, at least with this build, um, which means that our G Guardians are much less valuable, especially since we got one of our best ones banned on the ban list. And of course the last card is the OT. Uh, currently, uh, Stokea ST, um, once the other two OTs come out, we'll have to think about whether we want to play those, maybe play the stand one, but given the way that the build is, um, it's actually not as good as you might think. All right, so getting into the G zone, we're gonna be starting off with the Wisdom Teller Dragon. Uh, so Wisdom Teller Dragon is getting an errata where if you have the original Big Belly uh, Famous Professor, right, yeah, <laughs> and you did not get an imaginary gift this turn, you can discard uh, cards equal to grade three, uh, stride it, and then get two imaginary gift, Axel. And then um, it's when hit effects will always activate. Um, and it's on hit effect is when it hits a Vanguard, you choose when your regards gets plus 4k. It doesn't retire during the end phase, but it gets the skill that if it attacks a Vanguard while it is 20 k greater, you get to draw a card. Um, so what you usually do for this is you stride it over your um, big belly. Um, hopefully you have a burrow mushrooms. You call two plant tokens here and here. You stride because it is an axe skill. So you call the plant tokens first you stride and then um, you use the stride skill to counterblast one, uh, give the skill to these two units. So that means that if your Vanguard swings and they let it hit because it's gonna hit anyway with this skill. Um, so they're basically just deciding, are they gonna let you draw one card or two cards? Uh, so this swings, you triple drive, you give something 4K. Uh, most of the time it will be getting over 20K. So when it swings, you get that draw. Um, but if this hits, you get the draw off the stride skill. And if this column hits, then you get another draw off of Wisdom Teller's skill and you get uh, the draw off of the stride skill. So you have a theoretical um, draw of extra three cards if they let them hit. Um, you're guaranteed at least one draw, assuming you get up to 20K, which is not very difficult for the deck to do at all, um, but it is pretty good, especially for getting those Axel markers. All right, so next up is actually going to be the main playmaker of the deck now, um, which it used to be our finisher. 
uh, which is the Omniscience Dragon. I'm not saying that name again. I said it in the last video, but I'm not saying in this one. Uh, but anyways, it has the skill that if anything is retired or sent from the deck to the drop zone, you put it on the bottom of the deck instead. Or not instead, but you just put it there instead of the drop zone. Um, but the main effect that we're here for is when a rear guard attacks, you soul blast one and turn a card in your G zone face up. And then that unit gets an extra 5k until the end of the battle for each face up card in your G zone. And then at the end of the turn, you retire it or with its first go ends up going to the bottom of the deck. Um, so we're playing this at two because one is going to be your first real stride. Um, if you're going first, this is your first stride. And then once it gets back to you, assuming you live their first stride turn, you just first stride into this and you try to kill them. Um, but you do that. And then you have the second one in case you want to do the reverse stacking play, which with this deck, you don't really draw that much. Um, so it's not as feasible, but if the game goes long, it is possible there. Um, but the main reason we're doing this is to flip over cards. Um, and of course, with all the plant token cards, we are going to be aiming to flip over the four copies of Cyclone that we are actually playing in the G zone. Um, so Cyclone, as long as it's face up in the G zone, will give all your plant tokens an extra 5k. Um, so now there is probably an argument to maybe playing only three or um, instead of the four, uh, just to save on G zone space. But um, if you remember, the Omniscient Dragon is not a once per turn, meaning that theoretically, if you have enough soul, you can flip all four of these Cyclone in a single turn, giving your plant tokens a 25k boost or making them 25 or 30 on an Axel marker um, just for free, just for doing nothing. And then every time those tokens swing, they get progressively bigger each time. Um, so that is the main play that we're going to be shooting for in this deck. Um, and to add to that play is the one copy of the Magnetic Armor. Um, we never go into this. This is just flip fodder. I've actually considered playing more than one copy of this in the G zone because it is a once per turn per copy, uh, meaning that if you soul have enough soul, you can soul blast two and call two things from hand, meaning that you can extend even further with the deck. Um, but there is the argument because it does cost soul and you're already using a ton of soul. Uh, with your omniscience dragon but it's basically when your vanguard attacks you soul blast one call something from hand to rear guard circle most of the time it's going to be one of your token spawners uh probably the grade two that spawns two tokens because that will give you an extra two uh, an extra three attacks and then most of the time at that point you'll have at least two or three cyclones flipped face up so you're calling two more tokens that are already at 15 or 20k base um yeah uh, so moving on, just some extra cards that are also kind of a little bit flip fodder. Uh, I'm playing two copies of Bolaro. Honestly, I think you really only need one in this deck because um, if you go through your entire G zone, you flip all four Cyclones, you flip the Magnetic Armor, uh, you have this, let's say you have Wisdom Teller, maybe one or two G guards. Um, you have a ton of face up cards in the G zone. Maybe right now, if we had this entire flipped up, it'd be two, four, six, eight, nine. Um, and then Bolaro would flip another one. Uh, so that would be 10. And then Bolaro, which is unfortunately a Soul Blast. So sometimes it is a little bit hard to do that, which is why I do like some of the main phase into Soul um, so that we can actually use this skill. But basically, um, if you third stride this or second stride this, after using the Omniscience Dragon, you are going to be getting some very fat rear guards, uh, regardless of what they are. Um, because a lot of times, if you have 10 face-up cards in your G zone, that's an extra 40k to your entire front row. Um, assuming you did Wisdom Teller, you have two Axel Circles. Um, so that's five attacks that are at plus 40k. Um, so it is very difficult to survive a Bolero turn, um, especially if you had to survive um, the Omniscience Dragon turn before. And then kind of just like a flex slot, honestly, this can be anything. I'm just playing one copy of the Cataris. Uh, theoretically, you can use it because if you have all four of your um, Cyclones flipped up, a plant token does achieve 30k, uh, meaning you can restand that plant token and have it attack for triple door. Um, but most of the time, you're probably not going to be doing that. In fact, you can actually, now that I'm thinking about it, you can actually just, um, if you're running low on Cyclones, like maybe your plan didn't go well, um, you can actually do this, uh, flip another Cyclone. Let's say you only got two face up. Flip the third Cyclone, uh, front row units get plus 10k, so that's 25, uh, 30k base on any token. Um, so I guess it's kind of there like an emergency button, uh, but we're pl pretty much just playing it for that. And then it feels like a crime to be playing this few G guards in great nature, um, but I have currently opted to play this lineup um with starting with the new one 
the Sebchet Avil, which is a on place of Guardian Circle. Counter Blast 1, discard top card of your deck. It either gets 20k if it's a normal unit, or it becomes a perfect card if it is a trigger unit that you milled. Um, uh, I'm kind of playing this over Senkapu, uh, just because they do very similar things. Um, but I'm thinking I might replace this with Senkapu, who basically just gives your Vanguard an extra 4k for every open rearguard circle, which is essentially almost the same as the 20k. Um, but given some things, it is just um a little bit better sometimes and then this is a little bit better sometimes like if you mill a trigger then it's perfect guard gets around guard restrict so pretty good in that respect um playing the one of kudalini just for the counter charge you sometimes have plant tokens that are left over usually in the back row um so you can retire them and counter charge although as i said you really don't need that much counter blast for this deck what you need is a lot of soul uh and then i am for my last two g gardens playing the double ardeo uh mostly because it's a 25k shield um and it does really combo well with v big belly although most of the time as i said you are going to be ending on an empty board um so it actually that combo does not come up as often as you would think. All right, so I just wanted to finish off by kind of giving a little demonstration of what your first strike kind of looks like. Um, in this situation, we did go first and we actually rode into the correct big belly and we did our first superior stride. Um, we're going into this turn with two face up damage um, and three, um, three damage, two face up. Um, during the last turn, triple drive, drawing off Wisdom Teller and Stride Skill. Um, we have these cards after guarding uh, with a Perfect Guard and a G Guard. Um, so we're starting in this turn. We're going to go ahead and stand and draw. Um, we're going to be riding into the V Big Belly, mostly just to get an extra Axel Circle, because the more circles you have, the more attacks you can actually do. So in this situation, our goal is to basically pump our soul up with as many cards as possible, as well as calling plant tokens at the same time. Um, so what we could do here is um, call out the Orangine, Orangine, whatever his name is, Orangine, um, call a plant token. It doesn't really matter where it's going to be, um, but I guess we're going to call it here um, just to have it there for the time being. Oh, I almost forgot one important thing. Of course, we are gonna have to stride. Uh, unfortunately, we don't actually have stride fodder, so we are going to hard stride in the deck, um, which is one of the slight issues with the deck, but obviously um, it's not a huge deal, um, but we are going to be striding into the Omniscient Dragon. And then, as I said, we're gonna try and get as much soul as possible. Right, so the next objective, we kind of have to decide where we want to pump up. Um, right now I'm thinking we put this here because I want to be able to get some soul during the battle phase. Um, I think I'm going to be keeping this on field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call out the chinchilla. I'm going to use its skill to put itself into the soul. I'm going to choose one of these, uh, the prod pollens to discard. I'm going to look at the top card of the deck. It's going to be a critical trigger. Uh, since this is a card that can actually put itself to soul, I am going to actually choose to add it or leave it on top. And then of course I'm going to draw. And since I have a face up card in my G zone, I'm going to be giving the orangine or orangine uh an extra 5k um so it is going to be at 20k on the axel circle um so next up i'm thinking that since it's 20k something i can do to make a nice number is i can actually call the brigade put into soul give it an extra 3k so now it is at 23 hitting a very nice magic number over pretty much any uh kind of deck and then I want to fill out the last of my circles, so I'm going to be calling um, the Burrow Mushrooms, putting into soul, and calling two more plant tokens to my Axel circles. Um, I'm going to move my plant tokens up, and I think I'm going to be calling um, the last Frigid from my hand. Uh, I only have two cards in hand, and of course you might be wondering, oh, why aren't you calling this? Get two more plant tokens. Um, we're saving that for the extend combo. But in this situation, it doesn't really matter too much where we put this, um, but we're going to be putting it into the soul, giving 3k to one of our units. Um, maybe just give it to this one, because this one is going to be getting... Um, it's already at 13, meaning it's, it's going to be able to hit unboosted. But uh, with all our soul preparations uh, done, we're going to be moving into our battle phase. And just as a reminder to uh, me, pretty much, um, this has the extra 3k... This has an extra 5k from the chinchilla and then from the critical trigger it does actually have an extra 3k as well 
uh, meaning that it is at 23, which is a very nice magic number. All right, so in this situation, we do have a lot of cards in soul. If I go ahead and count them, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, 10, I believe, in soul, which is a very good number that we want to be on. Um, another reason why rewriting is pretty good. Um, but the first thing we want to do is attack with all of our non-token units. So we're going to be swinging the orange first. So the orange is going to swing for 23. Uh, we're going to be using the skill of the Omniscience Dragon, Soul Blasting 1, and flipping one of our Cyclones. Um, so now all these tokens are going to be getting an extra 5k. Um, and since I have um, four face-up cards in the G zone, uh, Orange himself is going to be getting an extra 20k. So he's going to be hitting for 43. At the end of the battle, he's actually going to retire. And thanks to this skill, it's actually going to go to the bottom of the deck instead of going to the drop zone. Um, so kind of countering... Um, deck out a little bit in that sense um next up i think that what we can do is we can swing with our next token um this is only going to be uh 10 plus an extra 15 or an extra five so that's a plus 15 and then since it attacked soul blasting the one flipping over another cyclone um so this token is now at 10k base an extra 10 from the cyclone so 20 30 from the skill of the option 40 45 since i have um, five face up, it gets an extra 25. So this is 45. So now this is going to retire at the end of the battle. And of course it's going to go to the bottom of the deck, but since tokens don't go anywhere, it's just going to evaporate. Um, so for our third attack, uh, we're going to be swinging the token and then using the skill of course, once again to soul blast one. And this time, um, since we do want to be swing with the Vanguard next, we are actually going to be flipping the Magnetic Armor. So this one is going to be a little bit smaller. Um, we do have the extra 10k, so it is a 20k base. Um, the skill gives 5k for every face up in the G zone. So that is 20 uh, plus 3, 23, uh, 33, 43, 53. A 53 token swinging at the Vanguard. Very nice magic number. Um, it goes to the bottom of the deck. Um, and then now we're going to be swinging with the Vanguard. So we're going to swing with the Vanguard, probably use the Curious Pony, an extra 10k to the Vanguard, draw an extra card, um, mostly just doing it for that extra soul. And then of course we are going to be proccing the Magic Armor skill to Soul Blast 1, um, choose a card from our hand and call it. Of course our call target is going to be the Prod Pollen, who is going to use its on play skill to call two more plant tokens. Um, so now we're going to triple drive, first check, second check, third check nothing um kind of sucks but it's fine uh it's whatever but uh next swinging up the prod pollen because as always we want to swing with our normal units first and then our plant tokens because that means um they're going to be a lot more powerful um so when the prod the prod pollen swings we're going to counter blast one uh flip another cyclone uh face up so we this is not a token so it doesn't get any bonus from cyclone but now we have 10 um base 14 24 34 44 49 at the vanguard at the end of the battle it retires and puts itself on the bottom of the deck um so now we probably want to swing um okay this is where i'm getting a little stumped because i don't know if we want to swing with the ones that are currently 20k base or if we want to swing with the ones that are 25k base um i guess in this situation it doesn't really matter that much these are going to be technically a little bit smaller but your biggest attacks are always going to be the last ones um so you swing the first token you soul blast one and you flip the final cyclone um so now with four face up cyclone all your plant tokens are getting an extra 10 or 10k 20k um, so this is a 25k base um, with the skill of the uh, Omniscious Dragon 25, 35, 45, 55, 65 token um, is going to be swinging. At the end of the battle, it retires and goes to the bottom of the deck. Uh, we're going to swing with the other token, uh, Soul Blast 1 flip something at this point you're really running out of cards to flip um so my next two targets are probably going to be these and then maybe either this or that um of course you can't always go for your g guardians because you're hoping to kill them this turn and your numbers are getting pretty big um but for now i'm going to flip one of the polarals um so this is going to be 25k base as we discussed previously 25 35 45 55 65 70 70k plant token um it's going to evaporate um, because of the strides skill and then we swing our 30k base token uh using the skill to soul blast one and flip something um probably a catarist because that's my least important um so it is a 30k base with a number of cards face up in the g zone 30 40 50 60 70 
80, 80 K base token. Swinging at the Vanguard, it's going to retire, um, evaporate, and then we get our last swing of our turn. Soul Blast one, flip another card in the G zone. Um, probably flipping this because if we go into Bolaro next turn, it is going to be absolutely stacked. Um, so once again, a 30 K base token. I believe it's going to be 85 because uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 80 85 yep 85k token um and assuming your opponent somehow managed to live that um you destride um and then i don't know you have not too many cards in hand um because you did kind of just exhaust all of your resources but let's say you take your two damage uh draw a card i guess this uh guard pg um g guard or something I don't know. So you do this, mill a card with a counter blast. Um, that, this, and then you have, I don't know, uh, hopefully you have more stride fodder than this. If you were to stride into your Bilaro and still have soul, um, basically if you have any cards in hand, you soul blast the one, flip, at this point has to be a G Guardian. Um, that is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 face-up cards in the G zone. 14 times four is going to be 56, which all your front row units are going to be getting. Um, if you actually manage to keep a token spawner, that is 54 in addition to the 30K or 25K base tokens. Um, so that is also going to be very hard for your opponent to guard. All right, so that's gonna do it for me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed just some of my theory crafting, some of uh, the things. Uh, if you think this is worthy of a ban, uh, probably not. Um, I mean, it got hit anyway, but <laughs> um, I guess this is why Spangled is banned because your attacks would accelerate that much faster. If you had Spangled and you double Spangled, um, you would have four face-up cards in the G zone in addition to your Wisdom Teller, meaning that all of your tokens are swinging for uh, an extra plus 30 on their first couple of swings, uh, which maybe would have been a bit too broken, but honestly, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, I guess they were worried about this card uh, becoming a threat with uh, plant tokens uh, and burrow mushrooms and Spangled. But honestly, you saw it for yourself. If you think this is broken enough for Spangled to be banned, um, I good for you, I guess. But anyways, that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, do all those YouTube things, and I'll see you in the next one.